Okay. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, hey, everybody. Wish you were here. <laughs> Hope I can say. I wish I could see you on, on Saturday. But if you can't make it, I will put the video out again so you can see the progress on the quilt. Up to this point, this is where you should be. You should you should have all the blocks finished if you're following along with block of the month. These are the blocks that you should have finished so the center portion of your quilt is done. Okay, so what we'll be doing from here on, we'll be adding these outer borders and the connecting squares and stuff. So for next month, what you'll be making will be, um, will be first of all, will be this, which is, um, and it's called border blocks in your in your instruction sheet and it's done using half square and quarter square triangle things using the instructions that you got at the at your first you know on your first sheet there on making half square triangles and quarter square triangles and we've been through that before with some of the other pieces that were in in the block already so you should know how to do that as far as the half square and quarter square triangles um, if you want me to remind you right quick um, what I what you be doing will be taking two fabrics putting them right sides together marking the diagonal of, the, of those two squares and I, I like to use the magic wand because I can lay it right down on the square mark on either side of it and then I know where my stitching lines are so you cut that in half and that gives you your half square triangles sewn together. Then if you're doing the quarter square triangles, you take that piece and another piece and they go opposite each other on, on stacking them and again do the same thing. So you're going to get a series of um, <clears throat> half square, I mean I'm, I'm sorry, a quarter square blocks like this. And then there are four blocks I think that is it two or four, that you put a, um, a, a full half square onto the two quarter square things. So this is what one of the units look like. It's really easy to get confused, so pay real close attention to what fabrics it's telling you to put with what fabrics as you start cutting your things out because it gets real confusing. So, you know, if you've got little post-it notes or something like that, you can put on the blocks as you cut them so that you won't get them mixed up. Maybe that'll help you keep things straight. But you'll, you'll have um, four that are this way and four that go the other way. There's a unit one and a unit two um, of the blocks. And basically, um, this is what you come out with. Okay, so that was one part that you're supposed to do. And the other part that you're supposed to do are the four blocks that are called the Eclipse Stars. And that's what this one looks like. Okay, so in this one there's a half square triangle here. There's flying geese units here. There's quarter square triangle units. And then they're just solid triangles. Um, notice one thing that I noticed when I was putting this together. Um, these lighter inside ones are real easy to confuse with these out here. So be careful when you're putting those together that you get this, I think this is fabric number one, that you get it in the right position and don't confuse it with this fabric, which I think is number four, I believe. Uh, I believe that's right. But at any rate, I wanted to remind you once again of some of the things that will make this a little bit easier. There is an awful lot of trimming on these to get them once you or if you make them by the instructions that are on there you're making a lot of, of flying geese units you're making a lot of half square triangle units and so one of the things that I found really really helpful well first of all let's let's talk about before we get to that this fabric has a variety of colors in it so when you start marking the lines that you're going to be stitching on you may have trouble finding something that makes it easy to see those lines. On some of the fabrics, the blue water soluble marker works okay. On some of the lighter fabrics you can see it, but you can't obviously see it on this this really dark fabric here. So the thing that I found the most useful was this white chalk pencil. You'll need a pencil sharpener and I'll keep it sharp, but this is what I found showed up the best of any of those things. Okay, the um, the thing I've shown you before is the Tucker triangle, is the Tucker trimmer, and I wanted to show you once once again how 
that makes all of your trimming a whole lot easier. You're going to have a blue million of these quarter square triangles that you need to trim. And they're, they you trim them to two and a half inches. Now the neat thing about this is, see this diagonal line right here? If I put it right along the seam line that I've got there, then I, I can move it around at the two and a half inch thing here. This has got to be trimmed to two and a half inches. So when this is right along that line there, I can easily see where the two and a half line is here and where it is here. So I'm going to trim here, and then if I've got it on this rotating table, I can I don't have to move the block and can just turn it around, line up that corner and that with the two and a half inch mark, and then trim around the outside. So it makes it easy to deal with if you've got a rotating mat like this. The thing about the once again notice how yucky that looks right now but if I want to if I want to trim it up I'm gonna take this two and a half inch marker here and there's a there's a line right there that I can line up right along this seam line here and my quarter inch is there so now I just trim here and here rotate it again and, and line it up and get the the two and a half by four and a half which is what this one trims to, trims to be so you have a lot of trimming on these blocks um, to because of the way you're constructing